You got a lot of women customers? Yeah. They got yeah. more money than me. They, they spend it. Yeah. I invest in women's dunks, sizes. All yeah. Women. Jay Wayne, it is awfully quiet in here. You're not taking this serious enough for me. Oh, yeah. It is time to go to work. You ain't here playing. You got one job today. Clayton, you know what it is, man. Right, Sam, Let's let them know the black market is open. The black market is open. The black market is open. Yeah. Bro, it wouldn't be a good black market if we didn't have no shoe store. Or okay. well, at least a good shoe plug okay. that could pull up to the black okay. market and tell you to meet my side and pop the trunk on you Come on, man. and bring your size. Come on, ain't nothing better than that. I've been up in all the plugs ever since we got to the black market. Now people been asking me, where can we get the plug, man? What we need the sh we need the sneakers. We need the some niggas call them sneakers. <laughs> sneaks. I never called them Kicks. sneakers. I just need some shoes. Shoes. But then you know, my, tennis. My, my partner got the sneakers though. Old people call them tennis. You get yes, the tennis. Sir. You get tennis. your tennis shoes. <laughs> the tennis. Yeah, you get your tennis. <laughs> Man, look, look, tennis is over. look right at the camera and give them a brief introduction to yourself and your business. Yes, sir. So what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Leo. I'm one third of the uh, the cool ass shop called Versus ATL. Hey. Wow. We're a buy sell trade shop in the heart of Atlanta, right beside Mercedes Stadium right now. Um, off Nelson. Uh, we've been in business for seven years. Uh, we do what's called buy, selling, and trading for shoes, streetwear, and vintage. Uh, we've had the pleasure to be featured on Netflix series Swap Shop, just covering some of the things that we do on the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, we've done pop-ups from LA to Miami, you name it. Uh, we're a household uh, name. Uh, we're for the people and by the people. Always giving back to the community and just having fun doing it. That's real. Yeah, man. Okay. That's dope. Say you needed the plug, man. I'm yeah, bringing, I needed it. Bringing the plugs in. I need to go, I need to come out there. I ain't been out there, man. man that's right let up me know. Alley, we'll so. open up the shop yeah. tonight for you. Okay. Don't tempt me. <laughs> hey, don't, hey. Don't let me know. Me. Let me know. <laughs> I damn sure need some kicks, bro. Let How did y'all get started in the business? Man, honestly, bro, like, uh, my, my part of the business um, started back in high school. Um, just collecting a lot of different things, sneakers, uh, thrifting, collecting hats, um, and just holding on to things off of the fact that I like nostalgic things. I was raised by an older couple, yeah. my grandparents, like most people. And man, it just got to a point where I started hoarding things and um, came across uh, someone who introduced me to the idea of putting things on eBay. Um, was in college selling a lot of stuff to like different DJs and like, athletes and some of the homies from around the way. And it, it kind of became a vision. I was like, hey, I want to open up a store and I know I'm gonna need a team to do it. Uh, I'm big on like manifestation. So I would go to different shows as I got older, sneaker shows, trade shows. Yeah. And I would sell, I would have one of the dopest booths. Uh, my, my booth was mainly focused on vintage fashion. So I would have the old school starter jackets that you would find at the mom and pop flea markets right. and the yard sales. And I would find like nostalgia Jordans, 85s. When, when, when were you, when was this for you? Man, honestly, man. So high school, I graduated in 07. Okay. Um, so college, you were doing it when it was, you could still kind of find it in the, in the market. Yeah, you can, you can get your hands on it. You just had to go out there and dig for it. Okay. Um, yeah. Me, I like to travel and find different things. And I, I like to book and like ask different people, can I go behind your scenes to like look for old nostalgic things. Um, so I kind of grabbed that, that love for that aspect of it and I would go to sneaker shows. And that's when I would connect with one of my business partners, Danny. He, would li he was living in Tennessee, Knoxville. And we kind of like, uh, we connected over dinner, like every time we run into each other at shows. And then one of my buddies from high school, John, you know, he was, he was a big collector like myself. 
And we kind of like, I kind of, pre I presented the idea to my team. I was like, yo, this is business model, buy, sell, trade, bro. Like, we got to set it off. I've been traveling around the world. I've been seeing things, and Atlanta just doesn't have it, and it's not done correctly. It's big in L.A., it's big in New York, it's big in Virginia, but it's not done correctly here in the city. So, uh, long story short, rode around, scouted different locations, and stumbled on this spot over in East Atlanta, um, East Atlanta Village, you know what I mean, to be exact. Uh, found this old spot, this old guy, he gave us opportunities, a couple of young cats gave us opportunity. Uh, similar to the cat before, I was working at the bank, so just giving you some indication of like my background. So understanding like business and systems and like how to make some money, mm -hmm. um, and but making it cool and fun and not thinking too hard about it. Um, so the older guy gave us a shot, you know what I mean, to rent his store, rent the building. Um, so we opened up the, the spot in 2012, you know what I mean? Um, and we started running ever since, you know? Um, all kind of people have come through, from your Travis Scotts, pulling up, buying vintage t-shirts, to your J. Coles. Matter of fact, that Hornets jacket that went viral on Twitter, that came from us, you know what I mean? So, like... Just word of mouth, yeah. word of mouth, like EAV, East Atlanta Village. What's crazy is Chad. Been there right by the what you call it? Yeah, Chad. I have been there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chad. I rock with y'all. Back okay. in the day, Chad was like, he was thinking about doing the 85 South like studio right beside our store. And look at this now. Right. My guy, like, right. it's, it's like crazy to be like to see this, like, and to see the growth. And everybody's just growing and manifesting things and. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a long story, but we just have fun on it. looking right now as far as vintage items, man. We got a whole network. Man, of so if you got Freaknik tees, I'm, I'm your I'm guy. Home. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I think I probably got one of the biggest Freaknik collections and I'm working on the project. It's hard around. to find, uh, bro. Yeah, that's art. it's super regional. That's, that's, we're talking about black art. We're talking, like, these are art pieces mm -hmm. that were put on T-shirts that actually, they weren't just freaky stuff. It was black kids saying they wanted to have a voice. You know what I mean? They're yeah. coming from all over, and I think that's you the... Man, we gotta, we gotta try to find some of them artists that did some of them shirts. Yeah, man. man. I, w I, I would always like to know that, man. Yeah. Like, some of them, because it was... I mean, then you would just see, like, it might be the black Mickey Mouse, black Minnie Mouse, black... You know, they had the fat album. Yeah, right, y'all. Yeah. Get that goddamn camera out of my house. Yeah, yeah. And what's crazy is people was Ruined cutting... my life putting asses on T-shirts. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and what's crazy is people were cutting up that art, clean their rims in the early 2000s. Yeah. yeah. And now um, those tees, I've seen them sell from six hundred to a thousand dollars, bro. Crazy. Yeah, it, it's crazy. But I just love like storytelling. I love making sure I, I'm not gonna just say I, my whole team. We love making sure people feel good with what they're doing. It doesn't make you the shoe don't make you. It's just we want to give you a cool ass experience. And I think we were big on like focusing on community, not being assholes. Like you might go in some of these resale shops and they just don't understand people. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. the thing is we created community where people keep coming back, you know, and they almost feel like, dang, like I'm a part of this, you know. So when What's you, some of your personal favorites out of your personal collection? Um, the vintage part, like I said, I'm big on the Freak Nick Tees. I think that's a big staple. Um, I like Where you find most of them, man? Man, it's traveling. Like, you go to a different city, somebody moved. Somebody's from Jersey when they came to Atlanta. Somebody's from D.C. Somebody yeah. moved to L.A. They just, you know, just wherever. I try to, like, f Dallas. Like, I go all over just sourcing different things. Um, but, yeah, but that's the vintage aspect. I'm big on, like, everyday, like, functional-looking pieces. Like, a kid came in from uh, Virginia this week on a buy sale trade, and he sold me this dope vintage varsity jacket. And I was like, this is green, popping. You know what I mean? Got a good deal for that. Um, good colorway right now. Yeah, yeah, I like green. Green, my, yeah. my color. Um, in regards to shoes, man, I'm an Air Max One type of guy. You know what I mean? Like, classic Air Max Ones. Um, I like Jordan Forest, the Bread Forest, if we're gonna go Jordans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I'm big on the New Balances right now. They're super comfortable. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty good. And I just, I tell people to do what you like. You know what right. I mean? Do you. You know what I mean? Like, just feel comfortable in your own. You know, and I think in the resale game, they kind of shifted. People was telling you, you're supposed to look this way. You're supposed to do that. And I think the, fo the focus of Versus is to bring that back to feeling good about yourself. You got like vintage 
other stuff, like oh. posters and toys. What, what's, what's one of your favorite non-clothing vintage things that mm, you got? Honestly, uh, something that, I like, that, I like, I got like all the old school, like I like the vintage Spike Lee pieces, man. Or you got some Africa medallion? You got some. Yeah, like you come to the storage. We're gonna have to do an episode in the storage unit. You gotta come to the storage unit. That's crazy. You talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring a bag up there and give me some shit. And now I'm getting crazy. I'm starting to look for cars and stuff. I heard you the car man. So I just just bought a vintage 94 Corvette with 25,000 miles on it. Okay. Like for unbelievable. Yes, for an unbelievable deal recently. And Chad was telling me, like, yo, you gotta meet. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Now that's about to be a new thing. Cars, vintage cars. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of them. But I love nostalgia. I think that's, I think storytelling is a big thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You collect, to- you got the toys, you got some wrestlers. Like yeah, we have, we, have, we have wrestling toys in store. Like, you come in the store, the store set up. Where's my phone at? They might have to add me as another partner. I got some shit. Yeah, man. You got some shit. I know, I'm telling you I got, I got some, some stuff shit. too, man. Let me see if I can show you a little something. Here's the sign. It's just confirmation on me to do all the shit I've been thinking about doing. This right here, I'm gonna go live on the ring real quick. This room alone is a vintage room in our store. We set it like a vintage bedroom. Yeah, you got all the shacks, everything. Yeah, you can see all crazy stuff. Space jams. That's just the vintage room. You got to come in store. You gonna, it's, it's not like any other spot. Let me see. Yeah. I'm fucking. And, and that's, I, got, yeah. I still got all that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. I'm Just do it. Post. I'm going to be like. 96 yeah. Olympic pieces. I, I can't that. do it, man. Yeah. We gotta man, got to meet some. Uh, this is a Nintendo 64. Yeah, it's, it's an experience. You feel yeah, it? It's an experience when you come in. It. Like, people, like, they feel good. I you know what I mean? Man. And uh, like I said, we're in the heart of Atlanta. Like, World Cup's going to be. Near us and a few more. We got we are, so you, you got cars too? EAV. Cars? Cards. Trading yeah. cards. Uh we got them too. Basketball, we got all that. Like, so yeah, man. So nobody you know, got more Michael Jordans yeah, than we me. Used to, so we used to nobody. be in, we used to be in okay, East Atlanta cool. Village. Right. Nobody. We closed that location down okay. in August. We was using that for like a pop-up spot, yeah. giving back to the community. People could book the spot for five hundred dollars a day. You okay. know what I mean? To promote, like sell their own brand. So we were big, we're still big on that, like pop-ups, giving back. Um, we invest in people's independent brands, give them a shot, put their stuff on the rack, not just the hype brands. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, shit, this year Dennis Rodman pulled up on us. Brought that the whole dude fleet. be popping up he, everywhere like, in the before city. Before he, when he was coming from the All-Star game, came to, he heard about Versus and he came right to Atlanta. And Sign like, some shit up. He, he came in there, kicked it with us for a minute, signed stuff, had drinks, had a good time. People was fanning out. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's been fun. It's a fun journey. Drop the address um, one more time. Yeah, where you so guys like, dude, longer yeah. we talk, we're gonna just get yeah, more yeah, yeah. and more excited. So the Addy, the Addy is 323 Nelson Street, Atlanta, Georgia, 30313. Um, right on the opposite side of Fellowship, right beside Brooklyn T, more black businesses, you know what I mean? Uh, Smoky Stallion. A lot of black businesses in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dennis the Barber. Proof How can us. they reach out? It's like, say somebody might have some shit you might be interested in buying. We got a gang of Man, you can reach shit. us in multiple platforms. Um, so it's VSATL. You can DM us. You can email us at VSATLonline at gmail.com. You can reach out to me, uh, Leo, VSATL. Uh, Danny, VSATL. Like, just reach out to us. Like, we'll pull up on you. We buy out all the time. Um, you set appointment, we go crazy. Well, there you have That's it, folks. Up, Black market. Yeah. We out of here. Yeah.